What's going on, everyone? Welcome to a brand new year for movies and films and filmmaking and everything you can imagine. Welcome to a new year of Movie Emporium, and we've hit 2023. Uh, this should be a pretty good year for films and movies and everything about movies and making. Hopefully, it doesn't become a crap fest like it has been the last few years. Uh, but there are anticipated films for this year, of course, as there always is. There's finally some films coming out, hopefully. I hope uh, there is a wide selection of movies. It's going to be a stacked year. It's going to be a top 10 list that is going to be probably very controversial to some people just on the simple fact that I have no Marvel Cinematic Universe movies in my list. There's reasons for that because I don't feel the list is very good this year. Uh, but for the most part, I think this is a, a crop of films that I think are going that I'm, I feel most excited. That I feel most uh, hopeful for, I guess you could say. And on top of everything, because this is a, because this is a most anticipated list, there are films for directors that I just don't know about right now that I I'm sure I'll be excited for that will make my top ten list. Like everything, everywhere, all at once. It's just at this point in the year, being January first, you just unfortunately don't know what's coming down later down the line. So you have to be aware that there are films probably out not on my list that you know I I don't know about at this point. So that's like most years. It's just the unfortunate nature of doing it most anticipated so early in the year. But there are still films I'm excited that you're excited for. As I always say in the comments below, let me know what you're excited for. But there are a couple of honorable mentions for 2023. Uh, those films are Sharper and of course Infinity. Pool. Infinity Pool is Brandon Cronenberg's newest film. I'm really excited for. Uh, Sharper is a film I don't know much about, just on the simple fact that I just I don't have a lot of information about it. I don't think I've seen a trailer for it, but for what I've read and who's in it, I'm interested. It comes on Apple TV Plus in February, and I think it could be a pretty entertaining film. But Infinity Pool, I love Possessor, so I'm looking forward to that. So that that's where I stand with honorable mentions for most anticipated. And uh, let's do uh, our top ten. So number ten is. So you get Timothy Chalamet and the director of Paddington and Paddington 2 together to make a Wonka film, Willy Wonka film, and uh, sure, put it in my most anticipated. I absolutely am looking forward to this film. Uh, it's a musical. It's set as a prequel to Wonka, and uh, the pictures that I've seen, you know, there's only been a couple like behind-the-scenes shots, but it, it could be a true winner. I mean, Paddington and Paddington 2, especially Paddington 2, are delightful films. Very uh, fantastical, very charismatic, and uh, this could be the same way. We'll see what happens. Maybe it could be terrible. I don't know. Still most anticipated because, uh, yeah, I feel this film could be a very fun Christmassy type movie that a lot of families could go see and have fun with. So number 10 is Wonka, and number 9 we have... So... Number nine should be higher on my list, but they're, like I said, it's anticipated, you know, it, making a list is weird anyways, but uh, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is a film I'm really looking forward to. I love James Mangold. This is a film that, of course, brings back uh, Harrison Ford for the last time. Phoebe Waller-Bridge uh, is in this movie. We have Mads Mikkelsen. We have, you know, Hall uh, Holbrook in this movie. Um, who else is in the movie? Uh, John Reese davies of course, coming back as Sala, which is already a win for me. Um, we'll see how this plays out. We'll see if it's any good. Uh, we know Kingdom of the Crystal Skull wasn't very good. And, uh, you know, I'm anticipating it. I love James Mangold. I think he's fantastic. One of my favorite directors. Logan, one of my favorite movies of the last decade. But this movie could be terrible. Uh, who knows? I'm still looking forward to it. It's Indiana Jones. Bring it on. So without, number, without further ado, number nine is Indiana Jones. And the worst title ever, Dial of Destiny. At number eight, we have... You know... If I if you had told me a year ago that this film would be my most anticipated, I would have laughed at you. But you have Greta Gerwig directing with uh, writing with her husband or uh, spouse Noah Baumbach. You have uh, Margot Robbie. You have Ryan Gosling, Simu Liu. You have a movie called Barbie coming out. And uh, once again, never would have said anything until I saw that trailer. That trailer's fantastic. That trailer looks funny. This movie looks funny. It could be a complete disaster for all we know. But you got to admit, you, that trailer was pretty great. That 2001 like uh, spoof was awesome. This trailer looks like it's going to be uh, what you expect out of these types of movies. And uh, well, I'm looking forward to it. I'm sorry. If it weren't for that trailer, I wouldn't have had this in my most anticipated list. But this movie looks awesome. So, yeah, I can't wait to see this. <laughs> it's Bob Indiana Jones, so get it, <laughs> go with that. But, uh, yeah, number eight is Barbie. And at number seven, we have... So at number seven is Martin Scorsese's Killers of the Flower Moon. Um, it's Martin Scorsese. I'll watch whatever he does. I think he's a very talented director. His last movie, I think The Irishman, was really, really good. There's not there's not much, you know, has Leo DiCaprio in it. Once it, you know, 
It's Leo DiCaprio in a <laughs> Martin Scorsese film. You know, he was in Gangs of New York. Um, it's a movie that has a lot of potential. Don't really know much about him. It. It's based on the book. I think it premieres on Apple TV+. Plus. We'll see. I think it comes out at the end of the year. If it doesn't come out this year, I'm sure it'll come out next year because that's how my list seems to turn out. But, you know, at this point, I, I have a lot of faith in Martin Scorsese. I think he's very talented. When he goes and does films that aren't typical of Martin Scorsese, they're the most interesting. And I think this could be very interesting for Martin Scorsese. So right now it's in my, you know, number what, number seven of most anticipated of the year. And uh, we'll see what happens. So number seven, Killers of the Flower Moon. And number six, we have. So at this point, uh, Taika Waititi can pretty much do whatever he wants. Uh, Jojo Rabbit, one of my favorite movies that came out that year. Uh, you know, of course, he worked on What We Can Do in the Shadows, which was a TV series or based off the movie, but a TV series. He, of course, did uh, our, our Flag Me to Death or something like that, which was really, really funny. The the pirate he plays is really funny. And he he, he can get a little overexposed. He does some, some things sometimes that are a little problematic. But there's no denying how good he is as a director and a writer. And I, I this is a my, uh, Michael Fassbender movie about soccer, which couldn't work. But, you know, it's, it is Taika Waititi, so I'm sure it'll be very heartfelt and very funny. So it comes out soon, I think in April or something like that. So it's called Next Goal Wins, and that is at my number six spot. So number five, we have. Um, Yeah, if you watch my Twilight Zone Fifth Dimension video that we just did for Static, you know that I was going to put this in my top 10 anyways. And uh, Cocaine Bear. If you've seen Lake Placid, you've seen Deep Blue Sea, you've seen any of these over-the-top, crazy, insane uh, creature feature movies, you know that this was always going to be in my top 10 just on the simple fact that it, it was an insane premise directed by Elizabeth Banks starring Carrie Russell. But then the trailer came out. And yes, the bear looks very CGI, but it looks amazing. It looks right where I want it to be. It comes out very, very soon in February. And it could be very terrible, but it could also be amazing and great and make a lot of money. It gives us a Cocaine Bear franchise that could be the greatest thing ever or the worst thing ever, depending on how you look at things. So I, I definitely can say I'm excited for this film. Is it going to be great? Probably not. But Elizabeth Banks is a very talented director, as we've seen in her career. Very talented actress. Uh, maybe she'll get eaten by the bear. I don't know. The story, the fact that the story is like, you know, more enhanced than what it really happened is what makes it more great. And attack, a killer bear attacking and eating a bunch of cocaine. It's, you get what you get. Uh, so there you go. Cocaine bear at number five and number four we have. Okay, so the big uh, whatever in the room, the elephant in the room is Chris Pratt is voicing Mario. It is what it is. I think Charlie Day is Luigi is a little more problematic, but that's just me. Uh, with that said, this movie looks awesome. It looks funny. It looks enjoyable. It's going to make billions of dollars. I wouldn't be surprised at like a $2 billion movie or at least a $1.5 billion movie. Uh, Super Mario Brothers movie is going to be a great, fun, entertaining ride. Uh, let's just hope Illumination does much better what they've done with their own franchise, which is Despicable Me. Um, it's a movie f movie that looks like it's going to hit all the nostalgic boxes and hit all the boxes that we expect. It just... It's the Super Mario Brothers movie. I, I've been anticipating this for a while, and it looks awesome. The trailers the trailers and clips all look great. So, yeah, can't say much more about it than it's already been said. It looks like a great film, and hopefully it's good. I hope it's good. comes out in April. So there you go. Number four, Super Mario Brothers movie. Number three, we have. So number three is Oppenheimer. I hope this is better than Tenet. Christopher Nolan. Killian Murphy's in this movie. Everybody else is in this movie that you can imagine. Every actor, actress that you can think of. Um, it's about Robert Oppenheimer, J. Robert Oppenheimer, and his you know help of creation of the nuclear bomb, the the you know the bomb and whatnot. Uh, it looks like it's gonna be epic. The trailers have been amazing. There's not much else you can say about it. It's a Christopher Nolan film. It's always gonna be highly anticipated. Shot in IMAX, so you know it's gonna be a gorgeous looking movie. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what he produces because. You know that he's mostly known for doing time stuff when it comes to like time and all that good stuff. It feels like this movie could be a little, little bit of a diversion even for Christopher Nolan. So I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully it's good. Hopefully it delivers. Hopefully the sound mix is much better than Tenet. But Christopher Nolan does whatever he wants and he usually delivers. So without further ado, number three is Oppenheimer. And number two, we have. So number two is, uh, of course, Doom Part 2. Can't much much more can't be said than has already been said. Dune, the part one was awesome. One of the best movies of that year. Uh, it was a movie that I was hoping Denis Villeneuve would deliver. I've had problems with his you know movies that he's directed just because you know I, I was not a huge fan of the last Blade Runner movie he did, but 
it, this movie, as long as it delivers like the first movie did, as long as it uses the source material as well as it should, as long as we get the the sandworms and you know the writing of the sandworms, and it brings back Timothy Chalamet and Rebecca Ferguson and Zendaya and of course Javier Bardem. Uh, as long as it adds in new characters and just adds in everything in this world, we could have another winner on our hands. I think this movie will absolutely deliver, but once again, it doesn't come out till November, so we can't judge it until we see the first trailers. Or as most Denis Villeneuve, Villeneuve movies do, premiere at like the Venice Film Festival, so we'll find out then. But Dune, part two, looking forward to it. Should be an absolutely excellent, at least from a visual standpoint, <laughs> excellent movie. So there you go. And number one, we're finally there. What is the number one most anticipated movie, you ask? Let's find out now. So as you can see, a little bit of a, a little, little bit of a swerve. Uh, I had to add this in there as a 1.5. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. I've had this movie on my top 10 or top list every year for like three years now. I refuse to put this at number one anymore until I actually see this film. Uh, it looks incredible from the trailer, but I don't believe this movie's coming out until I actually see, sit down with my bucket of popcorn and soda and I'm watching Tom Cruise jump out of helicopters and planes and you know jump off cliffs with motorcycles. You know, until that day happens, you are not my most anticipated movie anymore. You've ruined it three years in a row, Mission Impossible, and I'm not having this anymore. So you better come out this year. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna put you in my worst of the year list now that I haven't seen you. <laughs> so, anyways, I'm joking. I'm really looking forward to this film, but I, I can't put it in my top ten. 1.5. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. We'll see you hopefully in July or June or whatever. With that said, number one is... Who do you think you are? Really? We are supposed to be the good guys. We are. The number one is, of course, the movie that I'm anticipating more than Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning uh, is, of course, Across the Spider-Verse, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. You know, back when the first trailer for released for Spider-Man into, Spider into the Spider-Verse, uh, nobody knew that this movie was going to be as incredible as it was. This movie is an absolute, the first one was just absolutely uh, influential. It's absolutely incredible. Well-performed, well-acted, art style one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. One of my favorite comic book movies of all time. It's no surprise that they decided to do a sequel because it made a lot of money for what it's worth. And uh, yeah, the trailer for this, the two trailers they put out for this, absolutely looks like an absolute delightful, incredible, hopefully wonderful film that really kind of continues on the trajectory of what the first movie did. And, you know, this brings in like a lot of different Spider-Man, you know, from either the Neversoft games or... You know, Insomniac games or the cartoon or, you know, the bag Spider-Man with the bag over his head and he wears no shoes. Um, it's just, it really looks like a film that is going above and beyond, even though it's not the same writers or directors, it's going above and beyond even the first film. And I'm really looking forward to that. So it's going to be a film that I'm highly anticipating. Can't wait till when it comes out. I can't remember when it comes out, but I can't wait for it to come out. And it got pushed back a year or two, so it's unfortunate, but... There is uh, another one coming out after this in the next year or two, which I'm looking forward to. But for right now, Cross the Spider-Verse is the film that I most anticipated for 2023. And so there you go. That is my 2023 most anticipated list. Uh, once again, your list might be different. Most likely is. So let me know, as I said in the comments, uh, what your list is. But uh, it should be a pretty good year. Like I said, a lot of films will uh, be in my, most, my top 10 of 2023 that aren't even listed here, which I haven't heard of yet. Uh, but that happens. So there you go. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. As always, comments below. If you like what you see on this channel, awesome. Hit the subscribe button to join Movie Emporium. Hit that notification bell top to find us coming next. If you like this video, awesome. Hit the like button. And uh, I hope for a good year for Movie Emporium and films in 2023. So let's uh, get going and uh, head into 2023. Peace out, guys.